So thank you for joining us today. It is now my pleasure to introduce Lillian Abreu, our Outreach Program Officer for the Copenhaver Center and our host for today's webinar. Good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to thank our students and our online community for joining us today at the Lillian Lodge Copenhaver Center for Advancement of Women in Communication, our leadership webinar series. Today, it is my distinct pleasure to introduce to you our distinguished speaker, an Emmy-nominated weekend anchor and reporter for WFOR-TV CBS4, Maribel Rodriguez. Yeah. Needless to say that Maribel is one of our very own FIU alumna and was honored in 2008 with the SJMC Outstanding Alumnus Award. Thank you, Maribel, oh, for no, joining us. Oh, no, it's my pleasure you. to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Um, you know, as I see you and I look out, all these faces full of hopes and dreams. I was sitting there once before, many years ago. We're not going to go back that, that um, so many years. But yes, I was sitting right where you're sitting. And I'd like to start off by saying that I was born and raised in Miami, so this is my hometown. And I had the honor and privilege to start my career and grow and become a professional in my hometown. So for me, it doesn't get any better than that. I say that I, that I am blessed because that is a very small percentage of journalism students that have the opportunity to start off, especially in journalism, here in this market, which is one of the top 20. I think it's like at 16 right now. So it's an honor. It's a privilege for me. I learned so much from FIU. Um, so a little bit about me. I'm a mother of three. I'm a wife. And I'm also a journalist. So when I say that, I say that with pride because, yes, you can do it all. And I remember starting off in the career, and I had um, some some people, uh, some mentors who were already in the business, teachers as well. And one of the first things that they said was, "It's very hard. It's a very demanding career, and it is." So I'm sitting here in front of all of you, saying that you have to love what you do because being here, you have it, it has to be your passion. First of all, I wake up at three o'clock in the morning, which is crazy, and I do it every single day, and I do it happy because I love what I do. So passion, you have to have it, that's number one. And you have to have somebody who supports you. So when I say I'm a mother and a wife of three and I'm also a journalist, again, I say it with great pride because I believe that as women, and there are men, there, there are some men out here, which I'm happy to see your faces here too, because remember, you're also, you're in this business, you may be married to someone who's in the business as, as well, you need that support. Because without it, it's very, very hard to, to, to grow and to become a professional in this business. So how I started, I, well, of course, I started at FIU. While I was going to FIU, I was also a spokesmodel on a very popular show, which I'm very sad to say that this weekend was the last show of Saulo Gigante. I was a model there for six years. And to me, that was my second university because I was working there and I was also going to, to school here in FIU. So I had the best of both worlds. I was learning everything in books and I was practicing, practicing everything in the real world. Um, I worked there for six years, but when I finished, uh, when I graduated from FIU a year later, I was given the opportunity to work at um, Channel 10 locally here. I did that for a year. The transition was not easy because my background was in entertainment and it was in Spanish. Even though I was born and raised in Miami, I'm fully bilingual, which I say that again with pride. And if you are fully bilingual, that you have a leg up on the competition for sure. Because I started my career in Spanish television. Um, so once I left Sao Gigante, I began working in Channel 10 as a reporter, which again was not easy. I had to prove myself, I think, probably double or triple more than anyone that was there for them to take me seriously because of my background where I came from Sao Gigante. So I feel that I had to work even harder to get that story and prove myself that it's not just about being a pretty face and being able to stand as I did in Sao Gigante, you know, holding up the product. It's not what it was all about, you know what I mean? It was actually, this is, you know, this is real serious. I had to obviously change my whole train of thought and and incorporate, obviously, what I learned here in FIU, which was 
so important, which was sort of like my backbone when I went into Channel 10. And because I had that degree, they did take me seriously. So I wasn't just a spokesmodel coming out of Sao Gigante working on the number one most watched television show in television history. I like to say that, by the way, <laughs> um, <laughs> all modesty aside. But anyway, yes, um, you know, that's not what it was all about. Now I really have to prove myself as a journalist. And again, it wasn't easy, but there was a lot of people along the way that helped me. And I'm so thankful to them, and that's why I'm here, to lend a hand, a word of advice, a phone call. I'm a phone call and I'm an email away. And I say that when I leave here, I will give you all my email. And feel free, really, to call me and to email me <coughs> with any questions that you may have because I know the importance to have a mentor and somebody that can tell you, hey, do this instead of this, or it's easier to go this way than that way. I remember my first day at Channel 10, I was in the editorial meeting, and they said to me, okay, Maribel, you're going to do a package that's coming down from the wire. You're live at 12, and it was 9.30. I'm like, what? So... Um, there was somebody that was there that grabbed me by the hand and said, come on, I'm going to teach you exactly what to do and, and how to do it. And then, you know, I was there for someone else. So um, journalism is a beautiful, it's an exhilarating, it's a challenging career, but it's also so, so fulfilling. Um, every time I do a story that I know, it makes an impact on someone. And even though it helps one person, that's it, my job's done. I'm very happy. So I think you all are in the right field, but remember, passion, determination, that is key in this business. Maribel, you talked about uh, proving yourself mm -hmm. and being taken seriously. Is there any top, top two skills that you would recommend towards students and our audience as a journalist that they need to take into account while they're trying to work on their career? Well, now I think with social media, back then, back in the Stone Age, when I was <laughs> studying, um, there was no social media. So I don't have to worry about Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and all that. Right now, I say, and I say it all the time to all the interns that are working with me, be careful what you post, because that's always there. And as a journalist, your reputation is key, and your integrity is number one about, above all. So remember, they can Google your name, and anything pops up. So I think that whatever you post on social media, things that you do, okay, I'm going out and fun, drinks and this and that and posting everything on Facebook and I remember that this is a serious career. People are going to look at you to find out what's happening in the world. You're the face. They're trusting you. So whatever you do from now until then, be very careful because that can always come back to haunt you. You brought up a good point about being taken seriously. Mm -hmm. What recommendations would you have for students when working with very well-known talent mm -hmm. or TV executives as they're trying to further their careers? Um, I would say always let them speak first and listen. Um, I think I'm a very good listener, and, and I think that as a journalist, you also have to be a very good listener because you get to an interview and you have all these questions, and you know you get there and you you're with you know you have all these. Oh, I'm going to ask this and this and this and this. But if you're not listening to what they're saying, you may lose out on an opportunity to ask something else. So not only do you have to, you know, obviously be a good writer, be a great storyteller, you have to be a very good listener because sometimes they will say something that you weren't planning on asking, and from that answer, another question will arise. So I think seeing, the, you know, being a good listener, taking great advice, um, you know, and, and I just say, you know, if you make a mistake, take learn how to take criticism constructively, which I think starting off is so important, you know, because you're going to learn. I'm still learning after more than 15 years working in the news business. Each and every day I learn. Try to learn from, from sometimes, you know, people who are just starting off and know something that I didn't know. So sit there, you know, listen. And, and take uh, criticism constructively, I think. And as a woman being in the field, uh, what challenges would you say were particularly tough maybe when you were trying to, perhaps, from Salva Gigante transition into uh, Channel 10, Channel yeah. 4? As a woman, did you experience any obstacles or challenges or perhaps that you could give some advice to our audience today? I think um, 
Uh, so, I mean, I think we're very sensitive um, on many different issues. But I think, you know, sometimes I was letting my personal feelings get in the way of maybe when I was going to go interview someone. And there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, keep in mind, you're going to be facing a mother who just lost a child. And you're going to have to try to have her talk to you about this child who, whom she just lost. That is not easy. Myself as a mother and, and as a woman that we're all very sensitive, that's very hard. So sometimes you have to hold yourself back, hold your feelings back, and this is, you know, we're all, we're all human beings. So I think my sensibility, at first it was very hard. I'm like, how am I going to do this? How am I going to build up the courage to go up to this grieving mother and have her open up and talk to me about her child, which I think was very difficult. Is there any particular story that you like covering? Mm. I like I love feature stories, um, feel good stories, stories that are going to make an impact um, in people's lives. Um, there's there's just so many, you know. <laughs> there really is. It's hard to pinpoint just one, but I really do like to do a story that at the, that at the end it's going to help somebody. It's not just to do a story for the sake of doing a story. At the end, it has a message, and it's going to impact somebody at home. We're going to today, well, we're also going to take some questions from mm -hmm. our audience. And today's topic really is surrounding about Maribel's experience in women in television and succeeding in business. Is there one key thing that you would recommend our students and our audience, that key to success? One. Don't take no for an answer. There. <laughs> no is never no. No, never take no for an answer because, again, you know, as a journalist, you always want that exclusive interview. You always want that one interview maybe that no one else is going to get. And they may say no now, but you can ease into it and, and you know, maybe talk to them a certain way. Try to have that, you know, whatever you have, sweet talking, whatever it is that you can to get, I mean, not whatever, but, you know, to get that interview. Again, never take no for an answer, I would say. We have a question from one of our online viewers, mm -hmm. viewers, and Adriana asks, do you think by being a woman, it's extra challenging working in, mass, in the mass communication field? Um, you know, I think th the business has changed so much. You're seeing a lot more women in, in higher positions in journalism. But, um, you know, I think there's still that, you know, that the man is always, you know, the one that, I don't know, I feel, the man is always the one that they look to for, you know, you know, nightly news, and he is the person that we go to and that we trust in our news. But I think it's all changing, you know. I really think it's all changing. And again, as a woman, I think you do have to prove yourself a little more than men do, and that's just life, you know. I think that's just the way that life is. Is there any female journalist that you kind of see as a mentor, you said to yourself, I'd like to role model role my myself. I'm a huge Oprah Winfrey fan. I wouldn't consider her a journalist, but I just think that she's uh, a great communicator. Yeah. And I think also as a journalist, you have to be a very good communicator because remember, it's your face. Ultimately, it's your face that's going in front of the camera. And whether you have 20 producers behind you, writers, because that's usually the way that it is, remember that it's your face. So whatever you're going to come out reading, double, triple check that source. Make sure that what you are saying is 100% right, whether someone else wrote it for you, somebody who's been in the business 20 years, 30 years. Remember, you're the last face they're going to see, and, and you are the person who is communicating the news. So it's you. It's, it's your face. It's your image. So if something comes out wrong, it's you, not whoever wrote it. Uh, do any of our students have a question for Maribel? This afternoon? Yeah. Uh, what made you switch from doing entertainment stories mm -hmm. and feature stories into hard news stories? Well, I've always loved news. I was always fascinated by news, all types of news. Um, but again, because I started working in Saudi Gigante, I felt more comfortable doing entertainment stories because that was just my background. So when I switched over to Channel 10, again, it was a big, it wasn't an easy transition. And it was completely night and day from what I was doing. So I sort of, you know, that was like my crutch. I sort of felt back on that. I'm like, I felt more comfortable doing entertainment. 
And I remember my news director, Bill Pahovi, then, which I'm so grateful because he really just gave me my first, my first opportunity on television. He always said, Maribel, you have to break away and you have to start doing hard news. And I know that a lot of you out there love entertainment and say, I want to be an entertainment reporter. But keep in mind, each station may have one entertainment reporter and 10 general assignment reporters. So it is much easier for you to land a job as a general assignment reporter than an entertainment reporter. And the entertainment reporter is always going to be, you know, the third block of a newscast. You could be the lead to the newscast. So always keep that in mind. You know, it, and it really is always, you know, news. Sometimes, you know, it's entertainment news. But just, you know, keep that in mind. Is there a specific advice that you would have about branding yourself as an anchor, as a mm -hmm. journalist uh, here in the South Florida community? Is there any advocacy efforts, efforts that you take um, that you're a part of? Well, I was very involved. Well, this wasn't here locally. This was in the West Coast with uh, Mothers Against Drunk Driving. I was very involved with that. Again, this was in the West Coast for the Hispanic community. Um, right now, I, I just love really mentoring. Um, this is my hometown. This is my community. So I love going to schools. I love to speak with students about their career and however um, and whatever I really can do to help. Um, I try to be out and you know just in the community, which I think is so important for people to know you. You go out and you meet five new people. Like, oh, I met Maribel Rodriguez. You know what? I'm going to sit and I'm going to watch her because you know I like her. And to me, if if I the more that I'm out there, because it's not just about being you know behind the screen, it's about going out there and meeting the community. Again, this is my community, and these are the people that I am delivering the news to. So they have to trust me. So not only are they going to trust me, you know, doing the news, I go out to events. I'm with my kids. I take my kids sometimes. And they get to know me, not only as a journalist, but as a mom, as a friend, as a wife, as a person that they went to school with, a person that they sat next to in class. And I guess that's the advantage of working in this community, because people know me, not just as a journalist. Any other questions from our students? Can you give us some tips on how you've been able to manage like your life as a mom and wife and life as a professional? I'd say having a very good partner, and don't be afraid to ask for help. <laughs> um, I know we tend to want to do it all, but we can't. Again, I have three children, three boys, three, eight, and ten. Um, my hands are full. My schedule is as follows. Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, I wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning. I'm at the station by 3.30, 3.45. I am out on the street reporting Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, which I absolutely love. I love being out in the field reporting. I'm done at around 1, 1.30, maybe 2, depending on the story that I'm doing. I would do some errands, start picking up my kids in school. But when I can't, my husband's there, my mother's there, my mother-in-law's there. I'm blessed to be able to have that help, people who help me. And I'm not afraid to ask for help. So I think having a partner that understands your business and also that supports you is so important because otherwise you can't do it alone. You really can't. Any other questions? And something else that I wanted to touch upon. Oh. <laughs> You're talking about women in the business. And I see it's something that a lot of us encounter as women. I believe that sometimes we as women, we can be our worst enemies. We really can't. You walk into a room, it's filled, filled with women and men too. But when a woman walks in through that door, chances are the people who are looking at her, probably the women, as opposed to the men, really, you go and you look at her, oh, let me see her shoes, dress, look at her shoes, mm -hmm. look at her hair, oh my goodness, am I intimidated by her? You are in a interview for a job, 10 women, all these women are walking in and you look, oh my goodness, is she going to be the one to take my job? Well, because she has nicer hair than I do, mm -hmm. or maybe look at her nails, or look at her dress, and look at how she's sitting. Forget about that. I think we as women have to empower each other. And I think it's so important because many times, again, we are our worst enemies. We need to help each other move up in the ladder to success. 
and I am all for it. I am not intimidated by someone who is younger than I am and who may have more experience than me now with all the social media and everything, which I don't have all that much. I'm sure you all have much more experience on it than I do. But you can't be intimidated by other women. You are who you are. Embrace yourself. Don't be afraid to ask another woman for help. And don't be afraid to help another woman who is in your same field because that is the only way that if we stick together, like a band, you know, we're going to stick together and help each other. I think that's the only way that we are going to succeed and go up in the ladder in this business. Whether it's journalism, whether it's PR, whether it's marketing, whether you, you decide that this is not for you. But I think in every profession, I think that we as women have to help other women. I've noticed, you know, it's funny, I've noticed that sometimes men help women more than women help women, which is great. It's great. But I think we need to band together and help each other out as opposed to, you know, bringing each other down because of intimidation or fear that somebody's going to come and take your job. No. You know, if it happens, that it was meant to be for it to happen. We have two more questions from our online viewer. Jackie Lee asks, I recently changed my major to communication because I want to be a talk, talk show host. Will that put me at a disadvantage to at a disadvantage against journalism majors when I look for work as a television reporter? She wants to be a television host. Television host, a talk show host. Okay. It's not easy being a talk show host. Sorry to burst your bubble. I know it's hard and, and I would love to be a talk show host too. You know, but look at Oprah Winfrey. She started off as a reporter and as an anchor. So, you know, build your way. Uh, build, you can, you know, you can build your way up. Um, you know, not a lot of people make it in that field, and um, I think it's very important to take baby steps in this business. Take baby steps. Um, take all the, um, you know, internships you can, and learn. But little by little, and I think it's so important to set yourself small goals. I think it's easier to reach small goals than go from here to here. Okay, this is because you don't want to disappoint yourself in the end. You know, say I'm here now. Once I graduate, I would love to, I wouldn't mind, you know, working in market 75. But that's my goal. And then from there, work yourself up. I would like to... In two years, be here, and in two years, be here. I think those are attainable goals that you're not going to disappoint yourself, I think, in the end. Oh, we have two other questions, mm -hmm. one from Solange and Janelle, and they kind of touch upon the same uh, topic, which is what part of your job is the most challenging? And then Solange asks, as a former working student and a successful journalist, what are your thoughts on handling stress and multiple responsibilities? Yeah. <laughs> Breathe. <laughs> Breathe. Listen, not everything works out the way you planned. And um, so, you know, I w this business is very, very stressful. It can be very stressful. But you know what? At the end of the day, it's a job, and you cannot let it rule your life. Unfortunately, we do because it's our passion. And when it's your passion, you can't help it. Many times I'm in the car with my three kids and I'm on the phone trying to set up an interview. And at times I have to say, excuse me, I apologize, but today's my day off and I just picked up my kids and I'm with them in the car and I'm trying to set up. You know, and at times they will understand. Listen, we're all human beings. We're not robots and we're all humans. So I say breathe. And it may turn out the way that, it may not turn out the way that you were planning. But it may go a different direction, and you may have to go with it. Today, I had planned to be here at 12, 30, 12, 15. And they asked me to work today on Monday because in the news business, it happens. There's breaking news. It's a historic moment for us. The Pope is in Cuba. They asked me if I could please work today. I was freaking out, but I said, everything is going to be OK. We can all handle it. And, um, and it works out. So you have to, you know, just just go with it and um, you know and, and news is, is, is very unpredictable. Nicole asked, I'm sorry she had another question. And, and, answer. and Nicole asked uh, what are the most important skills needed to work in the communication field? 
but there will be that one highlighting overarching skill. Again, I think, you know, being a very good listener, I think, is important because many times I've been in a news conference, or many times we've been five different reporters interviewing that one person, and they're so they're, they're so into what they're going to ask next that they're not listening to what the person is saying. And what the person is saying could very well lead to your next question, or that person may be saying something that you didn't think of asking. So I think you have to be a very, very good listener. Um, never take no for an answer. Um, you could be a little pushy, but to a certain point, you don't want to... Um, Again, there, you know, each journalist has their own way of being. Myself, sometimes I try to put myself in their shoes, and you have to be very sensitive about the issue. So a mother just lose a child in a drowning. You know, you have to put yourself in that person's shoes, in that family's shoes. You're not going to run up with a camera in her face and ask her how she's feeling. Put yourself in their shoes. So I think... You know, sensitivity, I think, is very important. But at the same time, you want to get that interview. So you, you have to have a balance. I think you can't be too pushy, know when to step back, but then know when to go in. So it's, you know, question that you learn. Yes. Oh, yeah. When um, you decided to be a spokesperson for mm -hmm. Mothers Against Drug mm -hmm. Fighting, were you afraid it might look like activism and also well, this a visit uh, interfered all with your this was when I was working in Sao Gigante. Um, so I was doing that then. Right now I think that's a good question as a journalist. You don't want to, it's hard sometimes because as a journalist, you know, you have to be biased. You can't be on one side and you can't be on the other. You have to report the facts and the way that it is. Deep down inside you may feel that, you know, this is wrong and this shouldn't be happening. But I am not the person to judge. I let the viewers judge. I'm just here to report the facts, to tell the story of what happened. So that's why right now, as a journalist, I try to stay away from supporting a certain cause. That's why I say I'm here and I like mentoring. And that's really what I like doing. Um, but sticking up for one cause, I think, as a journalist, you have to be very careful when it comes to that. Um, I had a question. Um, what is one of the things that FIU taught you in the years that you were here, and what is something that you wish they would have, um, you know, focused more on, or that would have helped you more in your career right after graduating? I think my writing skills. I think I learned my writing skills here. Really, absolutely. This is something. Um, Yay! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I say that because <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think writing is so important. You have to keep in mind also writing for film and writing for television is very different. But once you have the core of writing, I think that's very important. I think that's something that you learn at a young age, not to pick up those bad habits. Um, I think my writing skills I learned here um, were so important. Very, very important, my writing skills. I wish maybe um, we would have had more of actual hands-on experience, which I know that before we used to have it here a little bit, and then... Yeah, we do now. You do? Okay. Well, when I came, when I came here, which was 97, yeah. 96, 95, 97, um, we didn't have much of that. We did have, you know, we were able to take out cameras and go out and do our, you know, our stories and our packages and so forth. But I think that, you know, the the core of, you know, writing and writing for television and writing my packages and writing um, and just thinking out of the box, I think was very helpful when I was here, my writing skills. Sorry, I can't ask anything else. Um, <laughs> um, we have been talking, I've been a super senior now for a little bit, um, and graduating in December, but the last two years that I've been here in um, FIU, um, it has been stressed a lot to you know gain experience aside mm -hmm. from the classroom. So it's not just the professors pushing you to do something, but oh, you gotta start blogs, you have to be involved in social media, mm -hmm. and um, try to find internships wherever you can. Mm -hmm. What else did you do as I can tell the Gigante while you were, because you did that while you were a student here? It was very hard because our schedule was very demanding. We taped for two weeks, and that's why it took me a little while to graduate, because you know how the classes are, and sometimes they're off or they're not. 
And um, we would tape for, for two weeks straight, sometimes two and a half weeks, from like 1 o'clock in the afternoon to 10 or 11 o'clock at night. So most, my internship, most of it was done there in Sao Gigante. And that's one thing that I wish I would have had the opportunity to do in news, just which was hard for me because of my schedule. It was very hard. Back then, we didn't have social media. Back then, we didn't have you know, the opportunity to do blogs and so forth, which right now you can. You can do it at your own time, which I think is so fascinating to do. But your internship, I think, is so important. I know sometimes it's hard. But doing your internship is when you really, that's where you get the experience. And when you're actually in a newsroom, I can talk from experience to me that um, it's broadcast journalism, my background, that's when you really know whether this is what you want to do or not. Because yes, you learn everything here in the books, but when you go out into the real world, this is what it's about. You don't have two weeks to write a package. You have to write that story in. Sometimes you have 30 minutes, sometimes you have an hour, sometimes you have 15 minutes to gather your thoughts and stand in front of a camera. That's the reality, the reality of it. And when you get onto the real world and you're doing your internships, that's when you realize how it really works. Mm -hmm. But again, having the, the knowledge from school and knowing what a microwave is and knowing what a package is and knowing what a donut is and knowing what a bosot is, um, you go there knowing what that is. Otherwise, you start a newsroom, you don't want to be asking, oh, what's a VO, what's a BOSA, what's this and that? Because you should go in already with the knowledge that you've gotten from school, from here. But again, every internship you can get, um, and whatever you can do on social media right now, which that's the way that it's going, um, I encourage 100%. Any questions from the audience? So you talked about sensibility and women mm -hmm. being like sensitive. Do you think women get a lot of criticism for not being that way? You know, I don't think so. I don't think so because again, um, this is our job. You know how many times I've been covering a story that deep down my heart is aching and breaking for that person? Again, we are human beings. We're not robots. Mm -hmm. And people at, at home understand that. I cannot be in front of a camera crying. No, right. As, as a, even though it breaks my heart, mm -hmm. it breaks my heart because we all have feelings, you know. But no, I don't think so. But I'm saying if a woman comes across as like too hard and right, is that a thing? Is there a woman that's too hard if she's not? No, I don't think so at all. I think if you have that quality about you in journalism, I think it's great. I think it's great because remember, you're gonna get a lot more rejection. Than you are, you know, people opening their doors and inviting you into your home, their homes with a camera. It's not easy <clears throat> to sit down with somebody and let them share a tragedy that just happened with you and a camera. It's not just you; it's a camera, mm -hmm. which could be very intimidating. So um, you grow thick skin. I have to say that one. You grow very thick skin in this business. One of our online viewers asked. Rihanna asked, what was the most <clears throat> what was the most challenging and or difficult situation you have been as a reporter? Oh. Um I'll probably go back to one of the stories that I did, which to me, and I keep going like to heartbreaking stories and I apologize because <laughs> that just you know, it's it's the reality of it. It really is. Especially when it comes to local news, we tend to do a lot of tragedies and sometimes people ask me, Well, why is you know, news all about tragedy. Well, unfortunately, that's you know what happens. We have car accidents, we have shootings, and we have um, homes that burn down, and we have drownings, etc. But I think one of the hardest stories that I've had to do was I remember it was it was a group of women. It was like seven of them. They would carpool to work, and they had an accident. I think it was on I-75 or 95. I can't remember, but a car cut them off, and the car plunged into a canal. And they all, none of them made it. It was seven women. So I had to go and I had to knock on seven doors, speak with seven families, try to get the pictures, try to get to know each one of the women in that car. 
and tell their and tell their story, which to me it was emotionally draining. Again, I think for anyone could have been. Um, so for me, I think that was one of the hardest stories I've ever had to do, and I was I always go back to it. But every day you're faced every day you're you know you're faced with a challenge. Today I was faced with a challenge that I had to go live at noon with the Pope's mass in Cuba in Olguin. His mass started at 10:30 in the morning. I had to go live at noon. The mass finished at 11:45. Okay, run, hurry up, and gather your thoughts. What did the Pope had to say? Write it up. Cut your VO. Well, we have editors for that, but you have to, you know, um, write the story. What did he say in maybe a half hour to 45, uh, in half hour to 15 minutes? That's what I had. And in news, sometimes that's the reality of it. So I think every day we're, we're faced with challenges, but I think that's the exciting part about it, just overcoming the challenges and knowing that you can do it. Do you have any practical tips for right before you go on camera or no. to get up? Like the deadline you had today, do you have any kind of self tips that you teach yourself right before to keep breathing? Is there? Just I would say keep it simple. Keep it simple. Remember, for television, you have a minute thirty, a minute forty-five to tell your story. Sometimes you have all this material, but remember to keep it simple. Don't overthink it, and you know, like I always say, it is what it is. Sometimes you feel flustered. Where am I going when that happens? Sit back, look at what you have, and um, remember, it's it's it's. You have a minute thirty to tell the story, so remember the most important facts and deliver what it is. Um, remember, you're always on you're always on crunch time because the news goes on at a certain time and your story hits at a certain time. So your story better be in at least five minutes before you go before you go on the air. So always give yourself a few more minutes. I always have my watch ahead by five minutes, always. So I think that um, that helps um, managing your time correctly. Again, sometimes. You're on crunch time, but I would say, you know, just breathing, and I would say never let them see you sweat. You can't let them know that you've been running all day when you're in front of the camera. You have to try to act, try to be as, as calm and as professional as possible because I think that I owe that to the viewer. I really do. So is there any last minute words that you may have for our students in our online community? Before they graduate, something that they should be doing, and something to think about that perhaps maybe somebody would have shared with you back in the day. You wish you, you would have known. Oh, yeah. Um. Again, I think it's very important to be tenacious, and and never take no for an answer. Set yourself little goals, and and I say this to many because they tell me, oh, one of the questions that I always get is. Well, I want to be an anchor. How can I be an anchor? Well, I think it's very important that you start off first yourself. I'm going to be a reporter, or even I'm going to be a writer. And that's how you learn. You know, it, it, it's great. Everyone, you know, a lot of the girls and, and a lot of the, the interns that I meet, their goal is to be an anchor. That's great, but in reality, you're not going to be an anchor right when you get out of college. You may get a job as as a writer in a newsroom, which I think is phenomenal because you're in there, you see how it works, you're writing, you learn how to work under pressure, time. Because right now, you know, you write and you have all this time to put it together, but in reality, you have you're working on the on the clock. So um, setting little goals, um, you know. Never taking no for an answer. Don't be afraid to ask questions. I think there's never a stupid question. If you don't understand something that they said, ask them again. Before you come on the air, you need to understand what's, what, what's happening. So if you don't understand something that they said, ask the question again. Um, you're going to be knocking on 20 doors 
asking for 20 opportunities, you're going to be sending out 30 demo reels along with 30 resumes. You're going to get maybe 10 that are maybe interested in you. You're going to get maybe five that say, okay, well, you know, I'll give you an interview and maybe you'll get one job offer. And don't let that discourage you. Don't let that discourage you because out of maybe 30 that you send out, there's going to be maybe that one or two that are going to say, yeah, I'm going to give you the opportunity. And also, something that I learned, and I always say from Don Francisco, who is the host of Sao Gigante, and I don't know if you all are familiar with that show, it was the longest running show on television history, ran for 53 years, seen by close to 9 million viewers every Saturday, and I worked with him for six years, and I would just watch the way that he would do his interviews, and he never really had a list of questions or anything, and he always said to me, Maribel, prepare yourself for whatever you do. Because once you get that opportunity, that opportunity may just come once. And if you're not prepared, it may never come again. So whether you're going to go interview maybe a kindergarten class, doing a story on the first day of school, whether you think that story is not, oh, it's, I'm doing this. It's your story. Own the story. Go prepared. Know what you're doing. You know, have an idea of what you're going to ask. Um, and be prepared for that story. Whether it's, you know, the, the, the last block of the newscast, it's your story. Own it. Try to be different from everybody else. Try to think out of the box, out of the cookie cutter. You know, sometimes I know they give us, you know, this is a way that it should be written. This is the way the package should be written. Beginning to end, it's a donut. End it at the end. You should start with this and end with that. But if you have something that's amazing and it's not the way they taught you, it's okay to think out of the box. It may work. It may not work. Your news director may call you and tell you, Maribel, that didn't work. But it's okay to take a risk, and it's okay to be different, because at the end, you are going to, you know, it's, it's something that's going to set you apart from everybody else. There may be 10 reporters, and they're all going over to one side, but you're looking, and there may be a little boy in the other corner who's crying, and has his head down, which, you know, you may want to find out what his story is. And it may turn out to be the story, different from everybody else. You get me? So try to think out of the box, because not everything is a way that you envision when you go out to do a story. So be open um, to do things differently, and you don't have to copy anybody else. You're yourself. Don't try to imitate me. Mm -hmm. Don't try to imitate another anchor that you like. Don't try to imitate another reporter. Because at the end of the day, you are who you are. You have, you're unique. You have your own writing skills. You have your own abilities. You have your strengths. Also try to find your strengths. What are they? Do you love politics? Maybe. Do you love education? Once you get into the news business, then that is something that you can sort of, you know, find your niche, something that, that you really enjoy doing. And maybe after, you can fall and you can, you know, become, you know, the, the political reporter. You become the, the education reporter. But first, you need to be broad and you need to know pretty much how the news business basically works. Well, great final yeah. thoughts. Great final thoughts. And Was it too much? Sorry, <laughs> I can go on and on. And the Copen Liver mm -hmm. Center thanks you. Thank you. You are a Panther Pride for all of oh. us. And uh, thank you on behalf of the university, the school, and uh, the Copen Center. Thank you. It was my honor. Thank you. Thank you. Again, if you go on our website, it's mrodriguez4 at cbs.com. If you did a story that you'd like for me to look at and tell me what you think, go ahead and I may not respond right away, <laughs> but I will eventually. Any advice? Um, internships are so important. Again, whatever internship you can get, I always say it's like um, so, so, so important. And again, don't feel discouraged because you know journalism, it, broadcast journalism is <coughs> for me. It's so exciting. I've been doing this for more than 15 years, and I love it more every day. I really, really do. 
And when you're able to do some uh, a story that's history in the making, for instance, on Sunday, I was covering the Pope arriving in, in Havana, and it wasn't scripted, and it was just, you know, talking to the pictures. For me, that was so exhilarating, and it was so exciting, and that's the way this business could be. It is very, very exciting. You're going to have your ups, you're going to have your downs, you're going to be stressed out, but at the end of the day, you're going to love it, be patient, be very patient. You may not start off in this market, you may have to move, you may have to move far away from your family, um, but eventually, if you love what you do, I think if you always have that passion, you will make it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. She really means it about contacting her, so. And Rodriguez Gore at CVS.com.